Hello everyone, Craig here. Welcome to another edition of the podcast, Tell Craig Your Story. Today we'll be speaking to comedian Lily Ma. Now Lily was born in the Shandong province of China, now residing in Shanghai. She's one of the main headline acts in the Shanghai comedy scene. She runs the new comedy show MSG Comedy, which features open mic sessions on Wednesday night, Friday and Saturday night. And Lily has headlined shows in Shanghai and has toured all around China. And here's a quote. Her traditional Chinese background blends with her passion for cutting-edge Western stand-up. This unique cultural fusion, plus her keen millennium perspective of sex and feminism, has made her one to watch. But before we go, please go to our website. We are at Podbean. Tell Craig your story at podbean.com. We have a link tree there which tells you where Tell Craig Your Story podcast is streaming. We are on all the major streaming services. We also have a YouTube account. Make sure you're subscribing to get all the latest updates and make sure you give us a like. All right, here we go. This is my chat with comedian Lily Ma on Tell Craig Your Story podcast. Hi Lily, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. I was yeah, I was uh, having brunch like a classy lady at <laughs> drinking prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was doing good. Yeah, that's good. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. And I saw you perform last night in a barber shop yeah. of all places. Yeah, barber was- shop and comedy doesn't really mix. Mm. How does that all start? It started because the owner of the barber shop really liked comedy and he wanted to use the venue like to make ha- comedy happen. So we're like, we'll take where wherever it have us, you know? Like so we so we started doing it. It's our only our second time doing it. So no. it's still new. I mean, I want to make that place more like comedy vibe like yeah. by having our logo in the back so it doesn't seem like a just a barber shop. Yeah. yeah. So I really thought that it was a bar. Yeah. Dressed up as a barber shop like uh, that was like the th- thing. that was like the theme yeah. of it. Yeah. But going there last night it was actually a barber shop. You could actually get a haircut and yeah. so a, a very unique. But you had all the heavy hitters of the Shanghai uh, Ian was there. Yeah. So well, they are they all willing to come and give their time? Yeah, because we're like you know trying to get all the stage time that we can. Especially mm. these days, we don't have that many stages like mm. uh, to perform. Why um, so. is that? Because one, well, COVID and mm. also Culture Bureau, uh, and uh, we just have less and less comedy club right now. We're I think we're the only one doing stu- uh, free comedy, mm. like. Okay, also Comedy Corner, but they only have one mic now, just recently. Yeah. Right. So it was not like when I started, I remember we can do like uh, two mics, even sometimes three mics in the mm. night. I can get like six to seven mics in a, uh, in a week and we have weekend shows. Yeah, so right. that's like, yeah, that's like you have to be on these stages uh, whenever you can so you can grow. So mm. yeah, these people will come. I mean, and, they don't have anything else better to do. <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm really interested to ask because with me playing in bands here in China, it's very, they're very tight with what you can and can't play and the lyrics. So yeah. if we play a show where it's ticketed, we have to put in, we have to give in the lyrics, yeah. the a performance. Mm-hmm. 20 minute performance and we have to write down everything we have to say yeah. submit it to the bureau and then they give us like a permit is that similar to the comedy show as well uh for commercial comedy yeah like uh for 
a spicy comedy they're doing really big now uh yeah. you have to uh hand in the script word by word even the crowd work have to be regulated i the reason why i started doing this msg comedy club thing is so we can perform freely mm. like we doing showcase we put in a lot of time and effort to make this happen because we want a f- stage that we can speak kind of freely right yeah. you are the creator or part creator of the msg uh, uh, i run this with my friend uh emma and uh jordan you see the host like yes. uh, was also helping i mean a lot of other people are helping too yeah. yes but basically me and emma run it right yeah. and again was that difficult to start up or it was I wouldn't say it's difficult to start up because, uh, like, we use a similar channel that uh, Ian. Because when Ian was doing Comedy Corner, uh, he built all these groups and also Lean built all these groups so we can uh, kind of advertise in their channels. I feel like getting the audience is the most tough part because mm. like a lot of people used to come to comedy uh, but they left the country or like we stopped oh, for a yeah. while so we cannot get a consistent gathering so i've been trying to rebuild that but it's yeah it's difficult to get people to come to comedy shows for free and is the other thing too you're speaking in english as well yeah is that a problem that the people they don't want to come because they can't understand the english or is that a good way to learn English? I don't know. It's like a good and bad thing that we're stand up. We're doing stand up in English because a lot of people still want to come to learn English. Yeah. But they don't understand the jokes, so it's kind of tough to have that kind of uh, crowd. But we no. also appreciate like if we have no audience at all, that would be worse. So we welcome everybody who want to come here, but we really want to get to some like english speaking crowd yeah. yeah and the other thing too is i see that you're having more and more open mics as well if someone wants to be a part of this yeah is that the best way to get into being a comedian sign up go to open mics go mm. to as much open mics as you can write down jokes that's the only way mm. yeah just have to be on the open mics constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I went to an open mic there just randomly. It was two years ago. And Joe Wong turned up. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, that yeah. just shocked. And then the next person come up and was like, started a half a joke and was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> this is too hard. Yeah. Bye-bye. That's how, I think that's like an amazing part of comedy. No matter how good you are, you still got to go to the open mics and do your jokes. I mean, unless you're people like Louis C.K. or Dave Chappelle, like they can be f- writing their material on stage mm. during proper uh, showcases. But like for us, even Joe Wong still have to come to open mics. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And otherwise, you can't really test your material, no That's... matter how good you think you are. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And he did. He said, "These are all a bunch of new, oh my new jokes. Yeah. Laugh or don't laugh. Yeah. That's good. Because then, I'll, if you don't laugh, I'm just gonna go scratch, throw it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. That is how we get stuff done. Yeah. Mm, That's yeah. very very interesting. How did you write material? Is it easy for you now to write material? Or mm. when you were first starting off, was it these jokes from that you've had for a long time? Or how, how did you sort of start off? I started doing comedy about four years ago. And mm. I think it's always difficult to write. But for me, it's faster to get to the punchline. So I mm. kind of, I cannot really explain explicitly saying like how what is the mechanics in it but mm. i know something is like easier and funnier to uh to say um but like when i started i can't even like locate a punchline it was like where is it like i thought that's a punchline but it's not but like, now i know what is not a punchline i would say yeah it always uh, i always started um writing jokes with stuff i was thinking in life like something happened to me like i was you know the frustration of uh you know dating and uh, like uh how i how i deal with people in life Mm. it's just like come from that yeah yeah 
And being nervous, I, one thing that I noticed last night yeah. compared to when I first saw you is yeah. you're owning the stage now. Is when that, is, did you first saw me? Oh, it was, it was a while. A couple years ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I was really... Yeah, I'm still very nervous now. Mm. Um, but, Why? Huh? Why? Is it just you or is it a part of the act or... I it was me. I mean, I'm still very afraid. Like, I still have to drink, like, before <laughs> I go on stage. And when I talk to you, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm really easy to ner- uh, nervous. Um, but I feel like it's also, it's not an act. People ask, like, you've been doing this for four years. How mm. come you still get so nervous? But that's part of me. Yeah. It's like who I am uh, when I talk to people. I am awkward. Even though I go on stage and talk about, like, very private stuff about my life but Mm. that i'm still a very nervous person and also i think if you're so not afraid of the stage it kind of lost the excitement Mm. you wouldn't be like really interested in doing this because there's no challenge there's no like new stuff to excite you yeah so i i I always feel like it's good to have this bit like nervous um ness in me like Mm. when i go on stage yeah Back to music. Music and co- comedy are not similar, but they are similar in yeah. certain ways where you've got to prepare a set. Yeah. You want to always play new... I want to always play new songs. Yeah. You want to write new material, yeah. right? Doing new material is always exciting. You don't want to keep playing the the old the songs. Classic banger, yeah. But yeah. they probably get the best laugh or the best reaction, right? So mm. how are you putting a set together now after four years of being a comedian Uh, i try to get in new jokes like even though i do feel like the most important thing for me is to make people laugh so Mm. i'm i wouldn't just like just let me try all new jokes like i don't even care about people's like uh, reaction i still Mm. want people to like me (laughs) that's like a huge part in my act so i uh i I try to get in new jokes and the way i um plan them is by how I feel like it's more natural. It's like I'm just making a conversation, talking with friends. Mm. That's how I started. Like last night, I started talking about like me not count the way I look and then uh, cha- uh, to like why I dress this way, like my dad and then dating. That's basically how I feel like natural is like sim- similar topic. Yeah. And do you think the crowd r- relates to it? Mm-hmm. You're saying in your jokes? I think a lot of stuff i say if it they don't relate to it they wouldn't laugh yeah you know? like if it, it's about the recognition in these jokes like i did a i did a um old female show recently mm, yes uh, were you there i didn't get it at all oh, okay okay uh, the old female show i was on last and honestly half the crowd uh, already left because it was like a little bit too long um but when i get on stage I think because of the material I selected, I especially selected like the frustration in dating, like how you uh, like the frustration of being a woman in this in this world Mm. and like people really, really relate to it. And Mm. I knew like I love the feeling like it just I, I can feel the audience like get what I'm trying to say. Yes. Yeah, I can feel the energy in the room, and that's like a really, really nice set. Like I had, yeah. How did that go to your female show? I think we went pretty well. Like uh, we get a lot of like audience mm. uh, usually when we do all female show, mm. and it's always fun, you know, because like comedy is not like a female dominated yes. thing. Yeah, like except I think Shanghai is a little bit different because we don't have we lost a lot of like foreigners uh, comics recently because mm. covid you know a lot of more chinese girls are started doing it mm. there's like way more chinese comics than uh, female comics than male comics because mm. i guess we've been oppressed like enough we want to talk about our things more and it's nice to see women talk about like things that you don't hear people talk about like, yes yeah in daily life like i talk about masturbation like i don't talk about <laughs> That was my mom <laughs> or my sister at all. Yeah, yeah but I, I think it would. But when I say that on stage, like girls would clap for me. Yeah, right. Girls would be like, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah that's nice. That's nice. Like, because 
if you don't talk about it, we'll never know. Oh, it's actually norm normal. Like other people don't know about this, or other people do this. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I think that's like why it's so fulfilling when、mm. I do comedy because、yeah. I can talk about literally whatever I want. Yeah. That's interesting. As long as I can make it funny. Yeah. What does your parents and did you say you had a sister as well? Yeah, yeah, I had an older sister. What do they think of your show? Uh, they don't know anything. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, not I, yet. Not yet. Like, uh, I think my mom. I told them I started doing a、uh, comedy this year because I'm touring and I was like, I'm trying to be more open about my life with my、uh, family. Yes. It's like stop. Hiding this, you know, I I started touring, so they know I've been、okay. like doing this. So why are you hiding it? If you've gained this、uh, recognition in Shanghai and you're doing so well, why do you have to hide it from your parents? Is it just a cultural thing, or is it just something in your family that they just won't understand? I think for the first couple of years, it just feel like I gotta. I gotta explain them like what is stand up comedy is,、mm. and also I. Don't wanna, cause it's always late. It's always like in the evening. I don't want my mom to know I go out every night to、right. do this. Like I don't, I don't. It just feels a lot of explaining to do.、Yeah. So like I keep it as a secret. So it's like easier for me to manage. They, but they know this year and <laughs> and I think recently I was. Because I really want to do this abroad, I want to do this professionally.、Mm -hmm. So I was talking to my mom. I'm trying to prepare her like that to let her know I might want to move out of the country to do this professionally. Come on. Because I knew she wouldn't take it easily. Because、yes. like me moving to Shanghai is already tough enough. For right,、me. right. Yeah. And so I was like trying to do the work, mind work, like years、uh, before. And she's like, "Really? You want to do this? Like with so little money?" She's like, started really not encouraging me to do this. It's like, okay, that's why I don't tell you guys in the first place. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back then.、Yeah. Speaking about your mom and your、uh, sister. Sorry, yeah. I also、uh, have a dad, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. You, you might. You might want to have a dad, unless、yeah. you're adopted.、Uh, yeah. I don't know.、Yeah. Whereabouts in China are you from? In Shandong Province. Shandong. Yeah. Qingdao, Weifang. Qing, yeah, like Qingdao is more like they think there's so much better than us because they're like you know rich、yeah. and they are yeah. So whereabouts? Because、uh, I Lingyi Ling is a really really small town. Right. Yeah. Confident. Growing up as a kid, a shy girl. What do you think? <laughs> I'm gonna say shy. Yeah. But not confident at all. Right.、Yeah. But did you grow up in? You said in a small village, right?、Uh, it's not a small village. It's actually a town、mm. that, compared to Shanghai, is small.、Right. But we still have really a lot of people. Yeah. And what did your mom and dad do、uh, as work? We used to have a family business that, like, we run a restaurant with other、um, like relatives. Then my dad stopped working, and my mom kind of stopped working for a couple years.、Uh, so, like, high school were. Middle school to high school were really oh, and college were really struggling like,、mm. financially, but、right. we're kind of okay now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When did you think of moving to Shanghai? Like, is that like the dream of a little girl, a little boy in a village moving to Shanghai or Beijing? I think when I moved here, I was like so, like such a like small town girl, and knowing that Shanghai is so big and so expensive,、mm. it's just really struggling. Then thinking, oh, dream come true. Like I didn't think that. It was like really. It really messy. Like when I first moved here, I was like, don't have much friends, so I was burying myself in my small, really, really small room. I used to live in a like basically a hallway.、Mm. Yeah, and I just like eat a lot of pizza. Like had a lot of problems <laughs> like that. And what and what was the goal? Did you have work here? Yeah, I have a I have I have a job. But I wasn't doing well when I started because I don't have a good leader. And also, I I move here because I want to do comedy. Right. Yeah. Honestly, that's the only reason why I want to move to Shanghai. So go back.、Yeah. Did you do any comedy back? Yeah. yeah, yeah.、Uh, I it took me a year. 
or two to finally sign up to a comedy open mic, and I was shaking like my voice was literally sh- shaking. It took me so long to finish a sentence when I started, and、um, then then、uh, I took like. Couple months off because I was like I'm so bad, I'm like so bad I couldn't do it more. But then finally sign up again. Yeah. So when you do comedy at that stage, do you have a person coaching you, or is it just all yourself? It's all myself. Like when I started. That's tough, but it is tough. It is tough.、Uh, I think. I started at KFK. They have like really good comedians、right. uh, back then, and、uh, like you know these people are like they're the comics club. I'm、mm. just a new person. I didn't earn any like respect. I think, and also people are busy with their stuff. So I I really don't get to know all these people.、Mm. Um, but I think when I started doing. When was that? I think when I started、uh, doing, there's a girl, a、uh, American girl、uh, called Erica. She started the the Blackout、uh, Comedy Club, and she's like really supportive. Like she encouraged me, and、uh, like we started to get more closer as like a group. Also been doing this for a while, so like I can get support from Ian and like、uh, Erica and like all the other comics who want to help me.、Mm. Yeah. So, what does it mean to have someone like Ian, who's done it for such a long time,、yeah. and Erica as well? She's she still in the country? She left.、Uh, she she left the country. She's like、mm. in Chicago, like right, right now. And she's right. been doing well. Yeah. yeah. So now,、yeah. now you're four years. You're one of the, you know, yeah, I'm one the of veterans the, already. Veterans, yeah, yeah. It's like tough to say that to acknowledge that I've been doing this for for years. Yes, you can see that you've progressed because. Uh, I look on your、um, Instagram and、yeah. it shows that you're in Chongqing, you're in Chengdu, yeah, yeah. Nanjing as well. Yeah, Nanjing recently. How does that make you feel? I mean, it is still amazing. You know, like、mm. I really love doing this and to go to other places and like do forty five minutes is really a treat. Also, I think it's a privilege、mm. because there's not a lot of like、uh, comics that has that much material in China. And maybe like in US, like by how many? Like I've been doing this for four, four years.、Mm. I don't think I would get a chance to tour even. But like、yeah. in China, I get to do that. I think that's a privilege,、mm. uh, and I appreciate it very much. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah,、uh, yeah. But it's still, it's still. I know, I know. It's still like、um, a lot of work to do.、Mm. I still、uh, kind of panic when I like. Lose my train of thought because doing forty five minutes is not like doing fifteen or twenty because you don't、mm. get a chance to practice that a lot.、Mm. Yeah, I've only been doing headlining shows for like less than a year,、mm. so it's like tough. Yeah, without a break too, forty five minutes. That's a long set for a comedian. <laughs> it is a long set. Yeah,、mm. yeah, but、uh, we don't have a break during during the headlining show because. People, it's tough to get people's attention. That's、mm. why we you, you have like the opener. The order is really important in comedy、mm. because like you get to make the audience engage and get them warmed up, and then you like, yeah, go straight for for the five minutes. Yeah,、mm. coming to Shanghai,、yeah. uh, you were saying that your mom was stressing about it.、I、have a similar situation with my mom, still stressing about me being in <laughs> China. All right. Uh, you know, I tell why. My, Wait, what is her reasons? Well, she's been here. She come here in two thousand and nineteen before、yeah. the lockdown.、Yeah. But mums will be mums. Yeah, doesn't matter. You close, right? Th- that's right. Yeah. 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 So, how was that for you, just to leave and come to Shanghai?、Mm. Pressures. My mom think I don't love the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's how she took it. Yes. She's like, there's a word in Chinese、uh, called "bai yan lao." It's、mm. like ungrateful. I'm the、oh. ungrateful child.、Oh. I don't like stay、uh, with the family and support the family.、Uh, like, j- yeah, just being a bad daughter. <laughs> and also, like you talk about this in your set about、yeah. being in a relationship and whatnot. Are they were they pushing you, or are they still pushing you to get married and have children and? Yeah, they still push.、Uh, but I have an older sister, and she's still single. 
to. There you go. So I got like they worry about her more than me because I'm like I mean I'm in Shanghai. I have a like a busy job, so they're like let's focus on that side. Pushing But, her. Yeah, yeah. Cause my dad uh, recently, I was in uh, Chao uh, Shan Shan Tao, like in Guangzhou, and it's a great food place. And mm. I was talking to my parents, saying, "Hey, this place is great. Like, come visit here、uh, for fun." And my dad said, "We'll never go anywhere until you get married." As a threat, I was like,、oh. "Okay, fine, don't go. You know, <laughs> I'm not gonna like just get married and have a baby so you guys can go out、mm. and have fun. You know." You've come to Shanghai. You started doing comedy. I've also seen outside of yes, jujitsu. I was going to say taekwondo, jujitsu. <laughs> That's like the most. My friends still think I'm doing taekwondo, even though I crack them like multiple times. Right. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just started. I started last year, but I break my.、Um, I tore my alignment、oh. a couple months, so it was stopped for a couple months. I'm still very bad. Yeah. Is this to stop the hecklers in in the crowd, or you no, just get some jujitsu in there? Jujitsu is really fun for me because I'm so afraid of like confrontation,、mm. and I'm very afraid of like physical touch with people.、Yeah. So like I I was I was encouraged because I was、uh, I think I started doing it because I watched.、Uh, The UFC fight. <laughs> the,、uh, so I started doing doing like jujitsu because I think it's really good for my psychology.、Mm. Yeah, and it, it is. It is、yeah. actually. I've been doing this like way more often, and it's such a great release of pressure to roll、uh, every day. Like、mm. I literally fight with people, so I feel like relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking、yeah. of that, I saw a video on again on your Instagram,、yeah. and must have been the the old girl show, and you had a heckler, and he must have been super drunk. Yeah, you're just yelling out these、yeah. like really some nasty comments, and、yeah. and then all of a sudden it was your turn to go on、yeah. on stage. Yeah, tell us was, this story. He was like right. There's a guy like he he started heckling the、Foreign、guy、girl. before me,、mm -hmm. um and. He didn't like the comic.、Uh, didn't really handle it very well because、mm. like he's kind of get mad and say tell the guy to shut up. And、oh. this guy, of course, he's not gonna shut up. You yeah, know? he's like,、yeah. how dare he tell me to shut up? And then I have to.、Uh, Lean went up, and Lean had like. Ling's way of dealing heckler is like more aggressive. He she's like trying to.、Uh, Shut him down by、yes. making jokes, but this guy is so aggressive. Like they had, like she did, she did like shut him down.、Mm. But it was like so aggressive, and the room is so hyped up. It's like in the fighting mode. I feel like so when I went up, um, no、I、pressure, just, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. It's like I had to address this, but I. Don't know how like I can't do it like the lean way, so I'm just like, how am I gonna you know like address this situation? I only have dick jokes, you know, like I <laughs> no, like I don't know what to do. I think I'm putting myself in a more vulnerable place, so this guy cannot be cannot add up to his in energy because、mm. if he's being more aggressive to me, like I'm a you know like. Vulnerable, like nervous little girl, and like people would hate him more.、Mm. He knew he's bullying,、um, bullying the comics. Yeah. So I think the way I handled it was like that. It's like make him realize I don't, I'm not a threat.、Mm. I don't want to like、uh, fight with you. I just want you to come down and let's, you know, focus on the set. Yeah.、Awesome. So that's how I handle it. Have you had? Other situations like that where you've had、uh, hecklers heckle you on stage, and like, how did you react to it? Yeah, I don't get a、uh, heck heckles much because I think the way I tell my jokes, the way I be on stage, people are always very friendly to me. They are like kind of rooting for me because、mm. they know I'm nervous.、Uh, but I did、uh, get hecklers, but they're nice hecklers, you know. Like one time I was doing like a 
I think he is also an old female show. I was talking about I'm 30 years old. I'm basically useless in Chinese standards. And this girl was like, No, no, you're not. How come you say that about yourself? <laughs> I was like, dude, that's a joke. Also, it's not my opinion. But she kept going on and on, like pap talking me. It's like, I mean, it's nice. It's nice that she wants to root for me. But I was like really bad at like uh, interact with like audience on the spot. And so I just like kind of saying, let's talk after after the set. Um, like you're, I'm not paying you for my therapy, something like that, and end it. It was like not heckling, but it's like just a little bit frustrating that your rhythm got break up, thrown yeah. off. Yeah, got thrown off. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to have that flow go on through the set all the way through. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, cause I was saying that because I have another joke after that premise hmm. like but now i have to explain this is okay you know this is okay this is not like me actually thinking i'm useless but like you throw me off and i have to find the rhythm again hmm. yeah and how do you feel like uh, when you've got a small crowd or a big crowd is it the same performance or do you change your setup how do you sort of do that it depends on the venue. Mm. Like I, I've been doing like bar shows, so it's usually small. Mm. But I realize because I did it, I did theaters uh, this this year. Spicy comedy. They when they opened up, they started doing theater shows. So it's like over two hundred people, <laughs> and I was really nervous because I didn't know how they're gonna you know react because mm. usually in the bar you're really close with the audience yes you, you're like three meters away or something but like in theater you're on a big ass stage right and how i own that stage how i move around that place mm. like feel in that uh space is really important and i have really little experience mm. but like after i did that theater i realized you know you have to move a little bit bigger you wait for their them to react to your joke and mm. then you like doing do your next joke just like try to really feel the energy in mm. the room yes. i think that's what i learned from the from doing like big crowd set yeah mm. That's awesome. And I'm so happy that they did get the spicy comedy. I still haven't been to the spicy comedy yet. So I'm looking forward to going there. But it seems to be getting more and more of a bigger crowd there, which is really good. And a lot more, not so much foreign people. Uh, uh, There was a lot of Chinese people the last pictures that I've seen, which is awesome. Because Nora is really huge. Um, Nora is a founder of the uh, spicy comedy. Mm. Like she has a huge follower on TikTok and right. all the other like social platforms. So it's like different than how we get our crowd at MSG. Yeah. Mm. It was a roast. Uh. And oh my God, you were a part of it. And I sat there and I was like, I don't know whether to laugh or go, man, that's harsh. So for you to be a part of a roast and then just have like seven or eight comedians just go bam do you just laugh it off because there's some pretty nasty things said but but i know you yeah. ju- you're just friends yeah. and, and like you get to fight back yeah. when you do something but is it difficult for you to do those roasts no no like, i mean for it's difficult for me to write roast jokes right. but i really don't get offen- offended at right all. I, I think, I don't know, maybe like I should, but I don't, <laughs> like, I really don't care. I do not like when people uh, make unfunny jokes like about me. Right. I, I feel like if you're going to attack me, like at least make it funny. Yeah, you know? that's yeah, right. That's, yeah, the, yeah. Like, that's the whole point. Yeah. Um, but I really don't care because if there is saying is like funny it has some trueness in it and that means they have like good observation of me like i also feel like these kind of roasts is really helping me to know my image like how i look what kind of person other people perceive me that's helped me to address that like in my set too so it's like good I feel like it's good. People, people, I don't know, maybe I have like really low self-esteem and I don't care what people say about yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. But the other thing is too, as much as they said bad things and you said bad things to yeah. them and you can wipe it off and go, okay, let's go and have a drink. 
It's not always bad things, though. But the other thing is, my friends that went for the first time that night remembered you. Okay. So whether it was good things or bad things yeah. I said about you, they remembered you as a com- comedian. So yeah. that's nice. there you go. Yeah, that's nice. I, I feel like, yeah, roast is really nice to work on your joke material. It also, like, it shows mm. how much of a good, like, joke writer you are. Because mm. if you, if like, comedy, like, doing stand-up is a little bit different than the roast because you have to be really good at observation. Like, you know some b- people, like, and know about, like, just people. Mm. in general yes. to write good jokes yes yeah because the people don't you can't premise the roast that much and people might not know the person you're roasting mm. so it's like you you have to let them know really quickly yes. yeah i think roast is really fun like yeah. for me yeah roast is like about a chance that you like if you can't make fun of yourself like that's why right. even do stand-up? that's right that's why right even do stand-up? Yeah. And, th- and that's in daily life as well if you can't yeah. laugh about yourself but then yeah i can't deal with people who cannot make fun of them exactly yeah it's like come on yeah have a sense real. of humor <laughs> yeah have a sense of humor i was yeah. like talking about this with my uh other friend like she was she was talking with this guy he was she was dating this guy was like in the middle of a topic he's like can you not make jokes i was like dude like you're a comedian <laughs> Jokes. Yeah, I can't. I can't really go through a conversation and not make jokes at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Gotta have a little bit of laugh. You posted on here, and it was uh, some of the comments on one of your performances. Oh, she's so nervous. Her voice is like trembling. Oh, that was big a, time. That was a comment on my uh, dealing with a heckler. Right. Thing. Yeah. Heckler one your own stage next time so in show business there's no such thing as bad publicity how do you react to something the people that give you that criticism constructive criticism is it constructive criticism or is it it is not like criticism most of the time it's usually like this is not funny that is not funny like even though you can hear the audience laughing Mm. and people would still say this is not funny at all like you're not doing comedy and they were criticizing me saying um too much i mean i do say um too much (laughs) (laughs) but it was like uh especially on wechat wechat channels i started doing this year Mm. like the comment section is just nasty most Mm. of the time it's nasty people just want to show off that they probably like who is it's just the, random because okay. it's like big platform and you you don't know uh how males or data females? males Miles. mostly okay mostly like people who comment badly so is it a chinese thing where it's still like the male dominant or oh, it's a female comedian she's speaking english is that a little bit of a backlash i think it's about men want to show that they know stuff even though probably these people never do comedy before got it they would say hey this is not a rose this is not how you do comedy but like i know most of like the open mic or like good comics in china like you never done comedy like how come you how come you tell me how to do comedy you know i think it's just like i welcome good uh, criticism mm. and i know i'm still like raw uh yeah. dealing with like hecklers or like uh the clips i put online but if you don't like it just you know don't comment don't like it like please exactly. don't don't have to be so mean uh on the comment section and mm. i also i remember when i f- posted the um heckler video because mm. it got a lot of views mm. and uh, like there's a lot of people comment on it and i I, at the first i was like i don't i don't give a shit like i i just want to show like people this is you know this is what happened mm. and i didn't hide the comment actually you can hide the comments uh you can like just uh show the comments that you want people to see mm. i didn't do that i just like whatever comment on here is fine but then you get so many people who are so mean to you you start like kind of want to fight with these people <laughs> you know it was like because yeah. on the on the description part i always said i already said i'm bad at like uh crowd work and this is my first time actually dealing with a heckler and people still say hey that's not how you do it it's bad i was like yeah i know it's bad i 
I already said it's bad. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like start to fight with them, but it's such a waste of time. Yeah. So I just like I don't I don't care like you. I don't care like about your comments. I just delete. It makes you stronger, Lily. It really does. It makes you stronger. Yeah. <laughs> the, these people that come on, and if any sort of artistic work, yeah. you're putting out something. Yeah it's you like and again with music mm-hmm. you're not gonna please everybody yeah actually i changed my wechat like channel name to lily my not funny just because there were <laughs> so many people say i'm not funny i was like i'm gonna save you guys some like work i was just like making fun of that yeah and you watch one day when you're touring all these other countries then you get a, a screenshot of all these people that were saying look at me now huh yeah is that a motivation for you? That would that would definitely be the motivation. Yeah. yeah. I remember one time I got a cri- criticism from um from a person. He doesn't really do comedy, but mm. he said like you gotta be really confident. You know, if you can't be confident, like people wouldn't get you, wouldn't believe like in your jokes. I was like, but there's different kind of like comedy styles. I'm never the like confident comedy, and so like. Yeah, and I did my headlining tour, so that was like... You might look like you're not confident, but for someone to go up and do a 45-minute set, Uh you've got to have some sort of confidence to get up on a stage in front of people. I don't care what people say. (laughs) I think I have confidence in my jokes. Good. I've been spending time on, like, years to work, like, you, you know, multiple nights a week. I mm. have confidence. I knew it's going to work, but if it doesn't, boy, like I am panicking, <laughs> you know? I've heard your garden story a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, like especially when some joke that I knew would kill most of the time. And if it doesn't work in one set, I'd be like, mm. should I quit comedy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so bad. Like, yeah, I would doubt myself like to, to that extent. Yeah. So, what happened to that boyfriend that you talked about in your set? Uh, the American guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's in U.S. He's oh. in uh, Oklahoma. I finally got a job. Cowboy, five was he? Five or six years Is he ago. a cowboy, yeah, Oklahoma? He, he did grow up in a farm, but he's uh, not a co- cowboy because okay. he hate work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's like, he's really funny. He's he's also a comedian. Right. Yeah, he, he okay. started doing comedy and before i do and i kind of look up to him when i started Hmm. and he helped me a lot uh when because i was still new and he would help me like sort out my jokes yeah Hmm. Yeah. that's good and do you think some of the chinese boys if you want to date them oh she's a comedian oh what if i if i do something wrong they'll make she'll make a joke out of it and she'll tell the whole world chinese no, all yes, foreign boys. Everyone, yeah, everyone. Every, like yeah. the two of the most like uh, frequent questions I get is like, "Will you like write me in your jokes <laughs> or tell me a joke?" Right. You know, I was like, maybe I, I don't write jokes because you know, like you are important. Yeah. I write jokes because it's funny. Yeah. 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 Don't. I do feel like people kind of afraid of doing like dating com comedian. Because like they are afraid that their personal life will be showed on stage. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. But also realize. I but realize would you, if you were dating someone and they said, "Oh, please don't do it," would you still do it? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Because I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Okay. But I also never got that question. But, but what if the joke is like, "Oh, this is gonna tear the house down." I have to say, can I please say it? Yeah. I think. I think it was like people uh, that I associate with. Mm. If a joke is that good, if it means that much to me, yeah. like my friend would understand. understand yeah, they yeah, would yeah. help me like yeah. to do that. But I, so Baby. far, I haven't found a joke that's so <laughs> important, you know, like uh, so far. But everybody was like cool about uh, me talking about like them on stage. Mm. Like even like I did ask my ex-boyfriend um, about like because I was making fun of him uh, finding a new girlfriend who's like really hot. Mm. And I asked him, are you OK me talking about it? Because, yeah, and he's OK. So, nice. yeah. yeah. Right. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? 
okay there are two times like the first time is like i before i started doing comedy my uh my boss like i was doing an internship for a french guy he he said like you're you're gonna do it like you're gonna do the open mic you're gonna like really do well because you're an interesting person and you love this like it's i think it's the first time somebody like give me compliment so directly i was like literally in tears like when i was hearing that so that was like really really nice to say hmm. uh, for him to say and the other time is a uh, um one of our fellow comic uh he left the country eric alexander i'm not that like close with him but like before he's gone like um he told me he think i'll do really well if i go abroad because he believed that i have like really interesting opinion mm. and i put in so much work in my um in my writing and like i would definitely do much better like people would appreciate my jokes he literally said he would get mad i agree at people i think they'll appreciate it like somewhere like in uh singapore or the philippines or even in the u.s or yeah. australia yeah. they would appreciate it more you could you could always relate it back to uh coming from jo and who knows where your jokes could you could start getting jokes and like 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 with uh that joe wong he relates it back to china and and america yeah and ripping China off as well as the US and it makes it so uh, a young comedian come up to you and yeah. said, give me some advice. What would you tell them? Write down your jokes. Take it seriously. Mm. Don't think you're funny and just come to the stage not preparing and waste everybody's time. Yeah. Respect the stage. Prepare beforehand. Always, always record your set and listen back to it. Mm. Find your rhythm. Yeah, and do it over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Social medias, where can we find you? Uh, I have a, I have Instagram, uh, Lily Horseman. And Why Horseman? Because I was really into Bojack Horseman. <laughs> my last name is Ma. So right. That's like horse, so yeah. Uh, I have Instagram and also have like wechat channel lily my not funny lily not funny i think it is <laughs> yeah and uh i i i'll try to do more videos because i realize i'm so sh like a shame like a shame of my work but it's good you know like you gotta you gotta put out stuff so people know that you're getting better hmm. so I'll, I'll try to do that and also can i advertise my msg club of course yeah. that's what we're here for so msg club uh we have open mic every wednesday have like our facebook page and our like instagram page uh and wechat account just like come to see us doing open mic and uh, we have showcases uh, on friday and uh saturday or sunday sometimes uh we're trying to make it more regular but we're fun you know and it's all free and uh, you will see all the best comic in shanghai because we're basically the only one doing like who some of it tell us some of them ian badenhorst you've seen him before he's like the longest i yes. think he's the oldest he is <laughs> <Yeah>. now <laughs> He is so it's like guy doing com uh, comedy in in Shanghai. Also Jorge Castel uh, Castellano. Yes. He is really good. He been doing comedy for almost eight years, I think, and he was part of the Mama Hu Hu. I think he was part of the founder. Um, and Nate Johns, I think, is really good. He's like quirky and like really really um, interesting comedy. Yeah. Some of the girls, come on. Some of the girls, yeah. uh, like. Sarah, Sarah has been doing all the uh, like spicy of mics and uh, Don Juan. Don Juan would come to the show. Don Juan, like you know her from like Fake News Alice, like she's really famous. Yeah. And she would do like open mics at our place. And uh, Viola, Viola, she's also doing like Chinese and English. She's like got a bunch of fans on stage. So yeah, basically, all the famous comics in shanghai so wednesday night open mic yeah friday night right uh we're trying to make more friday night but like just follow us uh, just like get our account wechat account and we'll post everything like online yeah great yeah and we got to the final stage uh sticking to the comedians yeah. 
Uh, who are your top two or three favorite all time comedians? It's such a cliche. International, yeah. Internationally. Yeah, uh, it's very much cliche, but Louis C.K. is still my favorite um, because he's like, the reason why I started doing comedy mm. and nobody else like had his like weird but intelligent thought. Yeah, he's like just the best. Uh, and Bill Burr is also like <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> yeah, because he's just like so angry and so right a lot of times. But he's also a sweetheart. I just like really love him. Um, but recently, I think um, my other favorite is a uh, Michelle Wolf. Like she did a new comedy special, and it's so good. It's just like so good about talking about. Because I was doing that like the kind of topic myself, but she's so much better than me. Talk about the frustration you want to be a feminist, mm. but you also like men, and like men don't treat you like you know how they want how you want to be treated. It's like it's so good. It's just like yes. yeah, too good. Yeah. And your top th- uh, three Chinese or, or foreign in China at the moment? I really love... I think Jorge is really, really good. So I really love, like, Eric uh, Alexander. He has such great, like... It's not dry, but it's just clever. It's just <laughs> clever. He would talk about, like... He's, like, lost his finger in a, in a fun, like, uh, light way. And Eric is one of my favorite, and uh, Kurt Dunson is one of my favorite too, because his energy. Because like in China, I think one of the thing we don't have is like big energy people. Hmm. Like Kurt Dunson has so much energy. Why do Why do you think that? I would. I don't know. I think like first of all, like Chinese people, we're not big energy because we're not like encouraged to be loud or mm. like very expressive. First of all, and second, I think Kurt is like a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's also why he's so good. That's good. Yeah, but... it's like irreplaceable because you cannot be that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like he he has a lot of things going on in his mind. Ben Frank. Yes. Damn. Yeah. Ben Frank <clears throat> is. I, the thing I admire the most about Ben Frank is like he really dedicate in this form of that. He, w- he, he would be my favorite he uh, comedian. He never miss any mics, any shows. Yes. Like he's literally my role model. If I don't go to any of the open mics, I'd be like, will Ben Frank do this? You know, yeah. like, I would literally think like yeah. I should be like him. That's how you get good. He, he had such a dry sense of humor, but... He had those punchlines that so just so like, precise. Yeah, he's so precise, yeah. and he like I think, but it's really funny because I know how like strict he he, he is, how serious he is with yeah. his act. He would always talk, re- repeat his set like before he go on stage. Right, but it's so fun to see him a little bit drunk right. on stage because that's so Loosen weird. Up a bit, yeah. And you see the real Ben Frank, right? Plus the like. So many years of hard work, sh- all showing on stage. That's really fun. Yeah, and he looks like he's doing good in New York City as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's I tried to. I was there in August and couldn't match up when the I was timing? there. To, yeah. yeah. Last question: Who's your greatest inspiration slash hero, and why? Somebody close to a hero is like I want to be like Larry David. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I want to be oh. so unapologetic yes. and and just be a weirdo, but like make that happen, like now make he, that entertaining to everybody. Now he is a funny guy. He is, yeah. My main followers are from Australia. Yeah. I, I'm from Australia. Okay. When are we going to see Lily Ma perform in Australia? <laughs> Can somebody invite me, please, please? <laughs> like, I don't even know if I'll get a like Australian visa. Well, we have a comedy. It's called Comedy, comedy Central. Central. Yeah. 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 So it starts like at the top Melbourne. of yeah, and it goes yeah. all the way down the coast. Yeah. Around the coast, so yeah. they jump on it. So it'd be so cool to do a comedy like festival there because hmm. it was yeah i i really want to see the see the like real comedy english comedies like stand-up comedy scene hmm. yeah 
That would be cool. I want to. I want to visit like so many countries if I can get time and money to go. Yeah, definitely. Come on, get yeah. down there. <laughs> I think they really like it. Thank you very much again, Lily. I've seen you from the start to now, and you just keep getting better and better. All the best for MSG uh, comedy. I think that's a great thing for Shanghai and the uh, the comedy scene here. And uh, all the best for the future. Hi, I'm Tony Fair, founder of Victorian Grooming Company. Is your beard feeling dry or the skin underneath itchy? Maybe you'd rather soften and tame your beard instead. Our classic collection of beard oils, balms, and soaps will leave your beard looking, feeling, and smelling amazing. And if you prefer shaving, our pre-shave oils and shave soaps will give you a smooth and razor burn free shave. Handmade in Edmonton with natural ingredients. Visit VictorianGrooming.com.